to piggyback off that, like the whole term, the happy, happy wife, happy life stuff. Oh, I got hey, to man, I already that. told you that. That's bullshit. <laughs> That's suicide. <laughs> hey, if you're a dude and you're doing the happy wife, happy life thing, get ready for a divorce. So I got the answer to this one, guys. Okay. Sometimes it's nice to be over 60 years old because you remember where it came from. Mm-hmm. This is in the, in, in the 70s. That's where it came from at the end of the 70s. Prior to that, yeah, I, I'm a former Christian. I'll have you know I'm no longer a Christian, but I was raised a Christian, so I know this. It was the happy wife, happy life came out, and then it, it just grew a life of its own. It was a joke. Mm-hmm. But it came from what was being taught in the churches at the time, which was um, select a good wife, have a great life. That's a big difference. Yeah. That's well, a big yeah, difference. because it comes from the scriptures, right? A, but a man that finds a good wife finds a good thing. It did. It does. That's where it came from. Yeah. But it doesn't really fit the gynocentric social order and where we're headed with, you know, women first. Mm-hmm. And who pays the majority of the tithes today in the church? Women. Yes. And Who's got the church that more than anybody? Women. Yes. Mm. And it was headed that way even back then. I mean, this had come after the sexual revolution. Everybody was pushing towards um, femme centricity. Mm-hmm. And it was funny to say, happy wife, happy life. If mama, you know, if mama not happy, God, God not happy. happy. Mm. Okay. And yeah, that might sound to keep funny. Keep everybody in order to police everything. But do you realize that it actually set you up for a whole lot of drama and trauma? Oh, yeah. Because it <laughs> because you turned it up on its ass. Select a good wife, and you'll have a great life. So, 